Decades ago in the hills of Kentucky and North Carolina and Virginia and other states, people made what was called moonshine whiskey. And in order to get it away from tax collectors that were known as revenuers, revenue agents, they hyped up or hopped up uh, stock cars with very powerful engines and, and uh, uh, extraordinary suspensions to outrun the feds. Well, this is coming to be in today's world what is called NASCAR, and it is the most popular spectator sport in America. Well, as a boy racing his first car on the country roads of North Carolina, Morgan Shepard stirred up a lot of dust. But now as a champion racer for NASCAR, what he's stirred up today is controversy. Sports reporter Andrew Knox tells us why. Sixty-one-year-old Morgan Shepard has been revving the engines for 50 years. How'd you like to have been a cop chasing around Morgan in Ferguson, North Carolina, back in 1953? My first car when I was 12 years old uh, was a 37 Chevrolet coach. And the young country boy pulled off quite a bargain to get it. I gave $12 in a height, two flying squirrels, a gray squirrel, and a 20 gauge shotgun for it. Not a glamorous start, but it began a slow climb to racing fame. Shepard emerged as a consistent threat on the Winston Cup circuit and was always in the fast lane. I was out running around, drinking. I didn't know when to come home. Um, ran around on my wife, did all kind of things that I, I shouldn't do. It caught up to Morgan in 1975 after he returned from a race in Daytona. I came back and my wife had left me and I said, well, I'm going to live it up. So uh, I called this girl in Florida, had her flown up here, and uh, uh, we partied that weekend, uh, stayed drunk every day. And then on, on Sunday, when I woke up, I was so sick. And that's when God showed me, Morgan, there's something wrong with this picture. He had driven down a dead end, but a desperate prayer to God changed his life. When I got done praying, I felt like I could jump straight through the building, right through my house. God took it all off of me. With alcohol behind him, Morgan's best racing was ahead. He went on to career totals of 63 top five finishes, 168 top tens, and millions of dollars in winnings. Time to retire, right? Well, the thought crossed his mind last year in a bout with NASCAR after being asked to remove a Jesus logo from his NASCAR truck. If I ever felt like uh, that I might quit racing, I felt at that point because this is what I live for, is to uh, serve Jesus. And uh, nothing's going to change that. They asked me to take it off. And uh, they told me the reasons why. And I told them I would respect them. Morgan removed the logo, but not for long. It wasn't five weeks that we took it off that NASCAR come back to me and told me that uh, if I want to put Jesus back on the hood, I, I could. NASCAR said the incident was a misunderstanding, calling it a communication snafu. According to a NASCAR spokesman, Morgan has been cleared to run the car with an appropriate message. I said, thank you, Lord. Morgan now displays a slightly modified Racing with Jesus logo on his truck. But it takes big bucks to race every weekend, and drivers rely on sponsors. In case you hadn't noticed, alcohol is a major sponsor. Morgan needs the money to compete in races, but says no when courted by alcohol sponsorships. I told him I wouldn't advertise alcohol. And I said, why not? You're running a race sponsored by uh, beer. And I said, well, it's like this. I go in grocery stores where they sell it, but that doesn't mean i got to buy it. Without that big-name sponsor, Morgan is limited in the number of races in which he can compete. He may not even be able to finish a race he starts. It costs thousands of dollars just to change the tires during a pit stop. But if he ever needs a reminder why he's taken his stand... Josh, i got something for you here. Here it is. Sure. His friend Josh Hill and Josh's dad, Rick. Josh was hit by a drunk driver. Josh was uh, perfectly normal. Uh, played high school football and good athlete. And uh, this, this is how drugs and alcohol can uh, destroy a person's life. The injury left Josh with a severe spinal cord injury. 
and he needed surgery to remove part of his damaged brain. This is why the 61-year-old is still racing. All I want to do is serve the Lord. We want to reach the world. We want to help influence people to change their lives. We don't want them to be like the Morgan Shepherd before of 1975. I'd much rather have a neighbor like the Morgan Shepherd now that wasn't going to be slipping over to see another man's wife or doing wrong things. I'd rather have a man that was saved that lived next to me. So he keeps hitting the circuit, getting out the good news of Jesus. And maybe someday soon, that big name sponsor will come along. I'm doing what I need to do to uh, serve the Lord and to build a ministry. This is my mission field, to do something for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, he's got quite an audience there. Sometimes those races have 250,000 in attendance. And uh, Morgan uh, Shepherd, what a marvelous man. And ladies and gentlemen, that's courage. That takes courage to want to go before that kind of crowd and say, I stand for Jesus. My car belongs to Jesus. Well, I, I mean, it's really nice. And I appreciate uh, NASCAR for because the, the truth is many, many of the people in racing are born-again Christians. It's just they have a chapel service before the races, and it's, it's really nice. But what about you? You know, are you willing to stand up for the Lord? Are you willing to take a stand and to let people know who you love and what your faith is in? Morgan's got a standard for us, and we really appreciate him. So, uh, you know, this might be the day that you say, Lord, You've spoken to me today, and today's the day that from now on I'm going to be your witness. Give me your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your power. Give me the power of God. And from this moment on, I will witness.